doing a lesson on advanced lighting techniques within Adobe Photoshop. Now, before I begin this lesson, just a couple of notes, um, because this lesson might actually end up being two parts altogether. Um, I strongly suggest that if you have not done any of my other previous tutorials, or if you are new to Photoshop, <laughs> that you don't, uh, you don't attempt to go full-blown on this tutorial. I mean it is doable if you just follow along. It is completely doable but I suggest that you really have a good basis of Photoshop before doing this. The dodge tool, um, the blending modes, the brush tool, and things of that matter. Um, as I said in this tutorial we are just going to be doing the lighting and I mean that really we are only going to be doing the lighting and no other effects. Now to start off here, basically what I did is I started off with the render and then I put in some clouds here in the background which actually come from a very useful cloud brush presets uh, that you can download and I put that link in the description if you are interested in that. But basically what you do is you take a uh, 3D abstract render and uh, you can take this render from a pack and you can download packs of these. This one happens to be from a pack and that link is included in the description. Or if you have a 3D modeling program like 3D Studio Max or Maya Cinema 4D, you can create these abstract uh, renders on your own. But for the sake of time, I just imported this one. It is an awesome render and credits go to the creator in the description. <coughs> so with that, I'm just gonna show you what the render looks like. I'm gonna hide a couple of layers. And you can see if you import the render, it's going to look like that, roughly. It's just going to be the render with a completely transparent background, which is very good. And then I first added a gradient just to get a background in there, some smooth colors. And then I added the clouds. Very nice. And to give the effect that this render is actually coming out of the clouds, I did a very rough sketch here and painted over some clouds there over it. So that is a... I named the layer over clouds here and it is over the render and um, that is why it gives the effect, the illusion that it's coming out of the clouds. But basically what we're going to be doing is taking this whole thing guys and we're going to be turning it into something like this with just the lighting. <coughs> and this is a very useful technique for all your designs, really specifically uh, graphical designers that do abstract design. And um, is there anything else? Alright, with all that said and out of the way, let's really get down to business here. I'm going to delete my final layer. This was just that quick render that I finished beforehand. And, um... Alright, let's begin. First thing you want to do, guys, is get a kind of bluish, whatever color you have in terms of your clouds and your render. You want it to match in the same spectrum, the blues. Because uh, the lighting has to flow. Everything has to be smooth and uh, keep that in mind with your colors. <coughs> excuse me. Please excuse my cough. But um, what you want to do is get a really bright white and um, blue here and you just want it to be barely noticeable that it's a blue. And go ahead and click OK and then hit P to uh, bring up your pen tool. You guys should know this stuff. And you're gonna basically just drag out and create around the base of the clouds and kind of keep this within a 3D perspective. You have to keep all this in mind. A general selection here for where our lighting, our initial glow is going to go. Hop over to our path tabs, control click, select that. And then we're going to go to select, modify, and we're going to feather this selection by about 100 pixels. <coughs> Again, please excuse my cough. It's really bad today. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a layer behind our render because this is going to be the general full-blown brights that come from our uh, behind our layer and we're going to make this a little bit even brighter you know 
You want it to be kind of white, as I said, barely noticeable blue, depending on the color of your overall design. And I'm going to name this, and there's going to be a lot of layers in here, guys. Whenever you do uh, advanced lighting like this, you, you have to have a lot of layers to really get the design. And as I said, I'm trying to squeeze this into two tutorials, so this is a really, uh, you know, brought down kind of tutorial. But what you do is you create the layer here, and let's call this uh, back, let's call this background light. And we're going to be doing a bunch of background light, but this is just a general one. You hit Alt Backspace, go ahead and give that a fill. And, um, okay, now. The next logical step in this is we're going to be taking the brush tool, and I have it set to an opacity of 50%, never 100%. You always have to zoom in and go into details when you're doing lighting like this. And always fiddle around, fade, uh, fade out the lighting there, but keeping the same lit color that you used on the background light layer. And um, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be, the first thing we're going to do is really add some brights and we're going to go completely white on this and we're just going to select our zoom tool and we're going to have to zoom in are going to have to zoom in and what we're going to do is create a new layer and let's call this really bright back and we're going to zoom this down and what we're going to be doing is anywhere the light is going to be seeping through the gaps in your layer we're going to be taking it and going full blown white and take as much time as you need guys this is a really quick overhaul here but take as much time as you need to get the right effect and we're just gonna be going I want light to come through here so it's gotta be really bright and uh, let's go up I'm gonna enlarge this brush give it a general opacity up here so it kinda fades doesn't have to be perfect we're gonna do all that later and there we go. So that is really bright there, and then it kind of fades off to the left and to the right. Now, we're going to zoom back out. There you go. The next thing we're going to do, guys, is we're going to use our dodge tool. It is located over here. See the dodge tool? And we're going to select a soft brush. Always soft with this stuff. Always soft on the lighting. And we're going to make it relatively small. We're going to select our render layer, and then we're going to clone it, and we're going to call this render dodge. So you know that this is the layer of the render with the dodge applied to it. We're going to zoom in here, hit B to bring up the brush again, or I'm sorry, not B, the dodge tool, that's what we're doing. And you are just going to dodge the edges here of the gaps for the render itself to brighten it up. As I said, take your time. This is going relatively fast, but uh, take your time, and you can see what I'm doing just by watching. You have to remember, light casts shadows. It does, so you have to keep that in mind, so that the light appears natural. So brighten up those darks, and there's probably going to be a light streak along there. Just going over the edges here. And got to do it down here too, definitely at the base. And there can always be some sharp shadows. That adds a really dynamic aspect to it all. Maybe around the rims, not so much there. <laughs> and always keep the shadows in mind. We're going up the render here. Things have to fade naturally. And as I said, you can keep these darks in here, little complexities. Just make it all come together really nice in the end. There we go. That might take care of it for the dodge tool. And, alright, let's zoom back out. That's good there. Now, for the actual glow of the light to illuminate and come through these gaps. What we're going to do is we're going to create a layer called glow. Go figure.